one of our four uh, main Dreamlifters. Uh, there's four of them in the world. They're uh, modified 747-400. They were actually passenger aircraft. Uh, so Malaysia Air, China Air, we got them from the, those guys. Uh, operated and ran by Atlas Air, so we actually contracted them to fly the aircraft. Uh, it was modified over an EGAT Taipei. Uh, it took a few years to do. Essentially what they did is they took a saw, cut off the top at Waterline 200, and then built the structure higher so we were able to withstand our larger payloads like the wings of the mid body. So everything back of the bulkhead is non-pressurized. Everything from the bulkhead forward is pressurized. Um, the other modifications that we did, we actually took off the wingtips on the outside. We had a little bit of a flutter issue uh, in flight tests, so we took those off and that went away. And then our other modification, we actually made the tail a little larger. So about a 10 foot increment on the vertical fin uh, to help with the weight and balance. What other range for the 747 or LCF like this? So typically what we'll do, depending on the winds, is we'll fly from our five main hubs. So we fly in Everett, Charleston, Wichita, uh, Gratalia, Italy, and Nagoya, Japan. All right, let's go check it out. Okay. This is our lower lobe cargo area. Uh, we have seven of these pallet positions. This is where we uh, haul more of our uh, pieces or smaller end item cargo. Uh, so right now we're doing a lot of one piece frames uh, to Italy, CMK kits to Japan, and we're doing some uh, terminal end fittings for the 777. And now I'll take you on up here to our main cargo deck where we store most of our product during flight, the larger end items. Okay, following you. Oh, wow. So starting up front here, we have this large uh, bulkhead. This is our bulkhead that's about three and a half, four feet wide to protect the pilots in case of an aircraft emergency. So if we were ever to have a hard landing, the SME that sits on these rails would actually shear loose and go flying into the bulkhead and it should, in theory, protect the pilots. Wow, this is so tall, it's like, two deck of a 747, which of course they modified. Not every day you get to see something like this. This is something, a technology, architecture, marvels. So we're back here at the aft of the aircraft. Uh, this is where the tail actually swings open, so our swing tail uh, system. So as mentioned earlier, our MTS, or our mobile tail support, we have a, a ball that sits in the back and provides hydraulic power and slowly disengage the 21 locks on the inside of the tail. You can kind of see where these actuators or the locks are that make up the 21 that go around the outside of the tail. Why there is a tail like this? Why this tail is needed like this? Yeah, so we actually looked at a bunch of different concepts. Um, we looked at either taking off the roof or going through the side. We developed the tail um, because we felt like it was easier. So we're able to swing open um, the back side of the tail and get the product in and, and offloaded in a fairly short amount of time versus the other concepts. Um, the other thing that you'll notice on the side here, we have these yellow boxes. So the yellow boxes is a laser guidance system for our loader to make sure that we have a, a standardized uh, set height or we're ready to offload the product. So this is an example of the actuators or the locks that make up the inside of the tail. So again, there's 21 of those that uh, lock and unlock the back side of the LCM tail. So you can kind of see the crack in the tail right here. This is our hinge point of where the tail will actually swing out over the left wing. structure in here. This is typically where we'll store all of our product um, as it's awaiting for final assembly. So today we have a set of wings over here. We have a 41 from Wichita. Uh, we have an aft and then a mid-body from Charleston. So it's all ready to go. It just has to head over to final assembly now for final uh, join and to polish it off. This is the 41 section. Uh, it comes out of Wichita from Spirit. Uh, we typically get, we'll do two, two of these at a time. Uh, we typically have a bunch of product overflow in here that we'll be waiting until final assembly is ready for it. So this is our mid-body section right here. Uh, so this is a conjoinment of the 43 section out of uh, KHI in Japan, the 44 section out of uh, Italy, 
and then the 46 section out of Italy as well. Uh, so it goes to Charleston as three pieces, gets conjoined into one major large piece, and then gets shipped to Everett for final assembly here. Um, so typically it takes up about the entire rack. Um, during flight, this would be the only production article that would be flying uh, on the Dreamlifter at that time. And this is the aft section, the 4748 is made in Charleston, uh, gets shipped here to Everett. Uh, as mentioned, we have two final assembly locations, both Charleston and Everett. So some of them will stay in Charleston and be built there. Some of them are sent here, uh, stored on our rack until they're ready for final assembly, and then they'll be taken over to our Everett final assembly to make the 787 production. This is our wing shipment. Um, it's actually manufactured by MHI, Mitsubishi uh, Industry. It's actually barred over to our facility over in Nagoya, which is actually an island. We go over there, fly the Dream up there in, pick it up, and we'll bring it here to Everett or on to Charleston, wherever the final destination is for our final assembly. So it'll typically be out here for a day or two, and then it'll go over to final assembly for final assembly. 